Dr. Sagan, first of all, if NASA is having such trouble getting its space shuttle off the ground, how are you going to even think about going to Mars? Well, we've already been to Mars uh, by unmanned spacecraft. By the way, it's not quite the right word since women go into space as well. There's a great need for the right adjective. But, you have uh, a suggestion? No, I can't think of any actually. All right, we'll crude. get to that. It doesn't work, C-R-E-W-E-D. Um, so we have gone there a number of times. You just saw some of the spectacular Viking photographs uh, of Mars. Four spacecraft, two orbiters, two landers, arrived in 1976, the continued working one of them for five years. So uh, you're not discouraged by uh, discoveries continuing no, problems? Well, you see, the, the, there are many different kinds of space program. There's, uh, there's a military space program. There's the civilian space program. The civilian space program has a manned part of it, which uh, is, has very little to do with science, at least so far. It has political functions, probably military functions, uh, but not much in the way of science. The science could be done for much less money. Right. Then, then there are application satellites, things that are very useful, weather satellites, Earth resources satellites, communication satellites that are beaming this program throughout the United States, and military reconnaissance satellites, which are immensely stabilizing. They prevent the United States and Soviet Union from making uh, too uncomfortable a surprise of, of the other. All right, but, but let me just ask you, though, I mean, you've just named the points of all of those things. What would be the point of going to Mars? Well, there's a bunch of things. First off, uh, we live on just one planet, one little corner of the universe, and we don't know what else is possible for planets because we've had just one experience. By studying another planet, rather like the Earth, and Mars is in many respects quite like the Earth, we learn about our own world. And to give a practical example, some of the initial work which led to the discovery of nuclear winter, the possible long-term uh, climate catastrophe on the Earth following nuclear war, came from studying of dust storms uh, on Mars. There are very practical things about geology and climate and the atmosphere and the interior of our planet that you can learn by detailed study of Mars. And there's the question of life. Viking found no hint of life on the planet, but it's quite surprising because uh, here are two planets, rather similar conditions, equally old, next door to each other in the solar system. One has life, the other does not. Why? It's the classic scientific situation of the experiment and the control. But in the past, you've been opposed, haven't you, to manned uh, space flights. I mean, why have you had a change of heart about sending a man or woman to Mars? Or, or several. Well, uh, if there are purely scientific objectives, then I say the way to do it is with uh, intelligent machines, with robots. That's the way we've been doing it. It's uh, something like 10% or maybe even 1% the cost of a comparable manned expedition. But science is not the only reason why we do these things. In fact, it's often uh, the bottom of the list of reasons we do things. Uh, in the case of the Apollo program, the moment a man landed on the moon, the program was canceled. It wasn't about science. So a, man, a, a scientist landed on the moon, the program was canceled because it wasn't about, about science. What I imagine in this case is something like the following. Suppose there uh, uh, somehow came into power in Washington and in Moscow leaders devoted not to uh, competition and nuclear confrontation, but to doing something together, doing something which would raise the hopes of people all over the world, something that would show that the United States and the Soviet Union could cooperate on a major venture that would carry the human species into the next millennium. A manned mission to Mars is an ideal such example. And I think the proliferating, the, the propagating consequences for uh, peace and understanding on the Earth could be very major, but right. it requires a political motivation for doing it. It can't be justified on science alone. Yeah, but you have to get there too. It requires a spaceship. Do we have a spaceship to get us there? The planetary system. Me or Sally Ride <laughs> or any of the men you'd like to right, send up. Right. No, no, I'm, I'm all for sending women. I, I think it's a <laughs> great idea. Um, the Planetary Society, which you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, is uh, a uh, organization of 120,000 people uh, based in Pasadena, California. Uh, we've uh, commissioned a study by Science Applications Incorporated as to what would be required for uh, uh, manned missions to Mars as the first step in the development of a permanent base on Mars and ultimately the, a permanent human presence uh, on, on Mars, making us a two-planet species. And uh, what uh, emerges from this study is that the initial steps could be done for remarkably little for uh, uh, around the cost of, for example, uh, military programs which uh, 
Uh, many have grave doubts about uh, whether they help or hurt the security of the United States and the Soviet Union. B-1, for example, or MX. You can do a manned mission to Mars uh, somewhere around the turn of the century, 2003, let's say, for that kind of money. How long would it take to get there? The, uh, this particular mission, it's a very interesting design, uh, involves a six-month voyage to Mars, 30-day dwell time on the Martian surface, and two and a half years to, uh, to get back to Earth. That's one of many possible program configurations. It would require an existing infrastructure in Earth orbit because you would have to assemble the spacecraft in Earth orbit, and that means something like shuttle, something like uh, space station, although not necessarily the uh, administration's present uh, configuration. Uh, so, yes, of course, there are uh, difficulties with shuttle. There always are with new new uh, technological systems of this uh, complexity, although we might wonder about the cost overruns and other problems with it. But there is no, there is nothing that is fundamentally infeasible about this. It's well within our technological capability and represents a, if you step back and look at it, a magnificent prospect for the human species to step off the Earth and not be confined to the planet in which we arose. All right, you say it's possible, but even so, it still sounds like beyond 21st century thinking. Do you think you could actually get the public to rally behind this the way they did behind Apollo and all of the other space missions? Well, remember, Apollo was a political program. Uh, of course, it had a huge element of, uh, of drama and excitement, uh, the idea of going to the moon, the inaccessible. But uh, no, it was mainly the U.S. response to the uh, catastrophe at the Bay of Pigs, an extremely foolish move by the United States, and Yuri Gagarin's first uh, orbital flight. That was our response. Uh, so I say, I think a great deal of enthusiasm uh, is sitting out there for this on its own merits, the scientific, the exploratory ones, but it requires a political hook to hang it on. And uh, the only hook that I can imagine that would work would be a joint U.S.-Soviet uh, mission uh, maybe involving other nations as well. Mm -hmm. And if you think of the implications of that for moving into the 21st century, uh, I think it's a very attractive and doable package. Thank you. I think it sounds like the basis for a good discussion at another time. Thank you for being with us, Carl Sagan. Jim?